appreciate you checking out this video. Before I continue, I want you to go to theultimatejetguide.com where I've put together a full guide for jet buyers like yourself. Let's talk about test flights. Yeah. Should test flights be done before you get into the pre-buy meat and potatoes and, and, and putting your hands on it? Should it be done after as kind of like a return to service? There seems to be two schools of thought, at least that I've seen. When do you do a test flight? Generally, the way we like to do it is find an airplane, do as much research on the internet as you can about it, call around about it, and then make an initial offer based upon your initial due diligence, and then go into the FAA records and the law books because you have locked in the airplane. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to have a contract in place before you start doing sure, the pre-buy. Sure. Let me ask you about this. There's a first time buyer. Mm -hmm. We all know that you can buy a plane with missing log books. You can buy a plane that's got corrosion. You can buy a plane that's got damaged history. For the first time buyer, how do you help him navigate when you come across some of these things that could be a hurdle, but a hurdle that you can get over? For a first time buyer, how do you kind of navigate? Sure, I think so. For the first time buyer, the biggest thing is before you get into really, like you said, the meat and potatoes of a pre-buy or even uh, making offers, really narrowing down the best make and model for your mission and budget okay. is a very good starting point because each airplane you go look at, every single one is going to have something about it. Each one, none something of them are going to be it. perfect. Yes. Uh, and, and that may be a, a scratch in paint or that may be a wing that came off. Yeah. Or if you know the make and model, like a citation, like corrosion under the potty, yeah. like we're gonna look for that. Yes, so each airplane has has hot spots, like he says. It all depends on what the squawk is. If it's, say it's a, 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 a normal squawk for that airplane, mm -hmm. in, in that case, there's gonna be a, an easy way f to get it done. There's most, a path, there's a path, to, a path to getting gotcha, it done. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and just depending on the cost of, of the squawk and the timeline, mm -hmm. managing expectations Ooh, with, I love with that. the buyer is a really good one. Is there any showstoppers that you would recommend a, a first time buyer definitely walk away from? Missing logs, yes. uh, damage history, um, uh, engines, you know, maybe a little running a little hot. Is there any like, you're like, dude, I know you're a first time buyer. It's probably best that we, sure. you know. So most of the time you, you find that a lot of these problems will compound if, if mm. because it's about the pedigree of the airplane. If you find mm. one that has corrosion, it's, it has corrosion because somebody hasn't been looking in the wings. It's been sitting outside. Mm. Uh, a lot of those, a lot of times those, those problems compound, but really it's a case by case scenario. If say, say it's got damage history, um, there's a bunch of airplanes that have damage history. As long as the 337 was filled out, if it, if, it, if it needed a major repair, that it was done in accordance with the right technical data, it was fixed correctly. If it had a gear up, the engines went to an overhaul shop mm -hmm. to get overhauled, and it was documented in the log books. Um, it's kind of, when you're going to do pre-buys, it's kind of almost like investigating because you're, yeah. you're wanting to put together the whole lifeline of the yeah. airplane, how it was taken care of from the time it was built until 